Welcome! My name is Guy Gaylor and today we're going to go over how to create light streaks inside of 3ds Max using particle flow. In this tutorial we'll go through the basic particle flow setup, we'll spend some time looking at how to create the materials, and we'll end with some samples. Before we start let's go over the basic concept. So if you take a simple opacity map and then lay enough of them on top of each other, it starts to look like a solid piece of geometry. If you then adjust the transparency and add in some glows, you can then create this cool looking light streak effect. Let's get started. So I'm using Max 2009, uh, the creativity extension, but it doesn't really matter if you are on an earlier version of Max uh, because I'm not taking advantage of anything that's been uh, new or released in a while. So let's start. Uh, we're going to actually, in order to create our light streaks, we're going to have the particles travel along a path. So I'm just going to create a really quick path. I'm going to set the initial type to smooth and drag to smooth. And I'm just going to draw it out first here in the top viewport. And I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm just going to have it spin around a few times and then come off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a camera and we'll put that right there and we'll change this perspective so that we're looking at the curve. And I'm just going to tweak this real quick. All right, and we want the curve to actually kind of fly by the camera. Which is a little hard to see without anything on it. So there we go. Just with a simple curve. And I'll change my camera to be 28 so we see more of it. So let's go ahead and create our particle system. I'm going to add a PF source. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and change the multiplier. Or, so what we see in the viewport is 100%. And bring this up. I am working on a dual screen monitor, so I, you'll occasionally see things fly in and off the screen. Uh, and I highly recommend using a dual screen. It makes life a lot easier. Okay, so we have a position icon, and I'm going to go ahead and change this so that it's coming from the pivot point. And what I want to do is I want to just actually take the position icon and do a path constraint to it. Our position icon flying around the path. Uh, I also want to change it defaulted to uh, being 100 frames long. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and change my frame rate to film and take it from 80 down to let's say 35. So as it spins around it isn't doing anything like what we want it to do for the light streak. So in order to fix that we need to get rid of the speed. And you see as we got rid of the speed it, the particles are now just being emitted from this point and then just staying there in space, which is what we wanted to do. Uh, we also don't need any rotation and we're going to change the shape to be a square. And we'll go ahead and change this so that we're looking at the geometry. There we go. Uh, we want to change the birth rate to last for as long as it's on the path, which is 35. 
And the other thing we want to do is we want to make it so that these squares are pointing towards us. So we can do that simply by adding a shape facing operator. And the shape facing operator, we just, whoop, we add the camera to that. And now if we scrub it, we see the squares are facing us. And I just rendered a quick view of it. Uh, and this doesn't look anything like the light streaks, but we will adjust that by going into the material. So before we start that, I'm going to go ahead and add a dynamic material in here. And let's bring up our material editor. So I'm going to call this streaks and copy it into here as an instance so it keeps it modified. Uh, and everything else is just going to be the default. The other thing we need to do is on our square, we need to have it go ahead and generate mapping coordinates. Otherwise, we would get an error the first time we go to render this. So I'm going to go into the diffuse. We're going to make it sort of an aqua bluish color. I'm going to turn up the self illumination. And I'm going to add an opacity map. So I have several that I created as samples here, which will be included that you can download if you want to, to, to play with them. Uh, and let's take this basic one here. So they're, they're very small. They're 128 by 128 pixels. And if we render this now, we will see that that looks different, but it doesn't look like what we want as far as light streaks. And the reason for that is that these particles are too spaced out from each other. Because the, in order to, for this effect to work, what we're doing is we're actually piling these particles on top of each other, and it makes it look like it's one solid streak. So in order to fix that, let's go ahead and go back into our particle view and turn up the amount. I'm going to go ahead and change this over to rate, and let's crank it up to 700. So this looks much better, but you can still see that there's gaps in between the particles that makes it not look quite like what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and more or less double this. And you see that that looks much better. Now, you also see that these the streak is not very smooth. It's it's kind of jaggy along here. Uh, and that's pretty easy to fix. What we need to do is if you go back into your particle source, under system management, you see the step sizes that it has. So in the in the viewport, it's using a frame, and then when it renders, it's using actually a half a frame. Uh, if we change this to like one eighth of a frame, it's going to sample it more times. And as we render this, you see, voila, it is smoother. Uh, and this renders fairly fast, so you can kind of crank up this as you know to a higher rate if you want to, uh, for whatever you want to get it to, as smooth as possible. And it's just going to cost you render time. The other thing we want to do is first let's uh i forgot we need to add a delete into here so that the particles actually don't just stay alive forever so it's going to add a delete right here uh, we're going to do it by particle age and let's make it fairly short let's say 20 and zero so if we scroll through this down here You can see the particles are now dying out, and as fast as it's moving through, let's make the delete a little bit shorter. Let's make it 12. So if we render this out, see that. Now what would be nice is if this fades out slightly, and we can do that 
by going into our material, bringing up our opacity, and we're going to go ahead and add in a mix shader. I'm going to keep the old one we have. So in this first thing, we have the, the original light streak with the opacity map on it. We want to change the color for the second one to be black. So basically, whenever this gets to 100%, uh, we would have nothing. And on this one, we want to add in a particle shader that's based on particle age. So now if we render this, we'll see that it, it has a nice fade out. And you can tweak these values here. So if you want the fade out to actually occur faster, you could lower this to like 70 and maybe lower this to 30. And we render this out. And there you go. The other thing we want to do to make this look better is there's a setting here under extended parameters that adjust our transparency. And, and basically what this is doing is it's telling Max what to do with these overlapping opacity maps. And right now what it's doing is using this gray filter to filter it in. So it's kind of leaving it sort of flat. If we selected additive, you see that you start to get more highlights in this where the particles are, are where the opacity maps are more overlapped with each other. Uh, so there it is without the additive. Now the, the drawback with using the additive, and you can fix this by going in and changing a parameter in your uh, 3ds Max INI file, but uh, if you look at the alpha for this, there actually isn't an alpha when you switch it over to additive. Whereas when it's in filter mode, uh, you have uh, your alpha. So the other thing we could do is instead of having the filter mode here set to this um, sort of middle gray, we could pull it down to where it's more towards the white. So it's going to basically, as it overlaps, gives us more white. And you can actually even put in a little bit of color into this. Uh, not that this is what we want to do, but this is an example. So this is basically using that color. I'm going to go ahead and switch this back to white. So there we go. And I would still tweak this a little bit uh, because it doesn't quite seem like we have enough particles. But there you go. Uh, that's your basic light streak. And now we will move into, I'll show you a bunch of examples of using different types of opacity maps and also uh, adding in glows uh, in uh, your compositing package. Let's look at some samples. I've rendered off a bunch of these with using different opacity maps, which you can see in the left hand corner. And it goes by pretty quickly, but you can always pause and And I've included these that you can download these from the website too. And you can also use an animated opacity map to give it a little bit different look. This example was rendered inside of Mental Ray, um, which you of course can do. This type of effect isn't all that efficient to render in Mental Ray because Mental Ray is a ray tracer and Scanline actually does a better job of rendering off things that have overlapping opacity maps. So something to keep in mind. This example here is with adding glow and the overused lens flare. It's just another example. And I hope that you have found this tutorial useful. And I look forward to producing my next one.